Welcome back to Misunderstood. I'm Rachel Yucatel, your host. Today, our guest is Jazz Mather. He's a successful entrepreneur and an Instagram influencer with over 10 million followers as of right now. Uh, he's an advocate for health and wellness after going through his own experiences, which gave him the insight to understand the balance between health and success. Here to talk about his journey is Jazz. How are you? Hi, good. Thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm so happy that you're here. Likewise, thanks for having me on. So um, talk to me about your childhood. I know you started your first company really early at age 11, yeah. but how did you even get to that point that you wanted to do that? Talk about where you're from and, and what made you um, get into that. So I'm Canadian. I actually grew up in, in Montreal and, um, you know, I was just an, an avid wrestling fan growing up. So just, you know, constantly just watching wrestling and calling the, the, you know, the hotlines to get the news. And at that time, internet was just recent and it was, you know, just coming out, becoming available to the public. So uh, I, you know, I, I got I got my first computer and uh, I would, you know, always want to go on AOL back then. That was the only internet access you could get even when you were living in Canada. So you had right. to see problems and it was like very, very, very slow. It took about a minute for a website to load. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, I remember. There, yeah, so you know, I just kind of got into. It. I used to play games all the time. I was big into video games. I used to play games on the computer, uh, and then from there, just eventually, I you know learned how to build websites. Uh, it was very, it was a slow process. There was, you know, back then it would you couldn't even buy a domain name. You know, it wasn't even like .dot coms weren't openly available like they are today. Uh, so there were like you know you 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 to open a website you'd have to be on another community and have like a, you know, you, you'd be part of their community and such. And like, you build like a website through a page builder. But uh -huh. I started doing that. I started to post news online and, you know, just go into chat rooms and promote my site. And eventually it just became a thing, you know, it took a couple of years, but it became, it became a thing where I used to get a lot of hits and uh, with the hits, I had ad banners and I used to make uh, money off the ad banners. How did you even figure that out as a, as a young kid? Um, I just, uh, I, don't know, I just, you know, just learned through the process. So it was just very, very like the company that was doing the ads back then too, they were, they were heavily into video games or media company, but you know, they were heavily involved in video games in the gaming space. So, um, you know, I got, I got to just, you know, get, get involved with, you know, just to see that how the, how they monetize and like, Hey, you have a website, you can put ads on there. You can make money based on how long people stay on your site for and how many pages you have, you know, how attractive or how informative it is so that just uh my you know my, my passion or what i used to do is just watch wrestling and I, I you know and just doing something for fun actually turned into uh uh into a into a business without even me realizing and as a kid were you doing this for you know to get money to like buy something or you actually yeah. were into it because you liked the job no, so so I had to find a way to make money because I wanted to keep buying different things that were like you know wrestling memorabilia and like oh. different types of like uh, uh, like like picture frames and stand up like you know the the the, the tall sta the tall stand ups the pull out ones and stuff. So I wanted to buy a lot of different things, and I was limited by you know at one point my parents said you know it's, they're not going to just keep buying me stuff and I have to you know work for the money and earn it. So. I just, uh, you know, found a way to do it. That's amazing. And what did your your parents do for a living at that point? Uh, my dad had a marketing company. He used to, he was doing a lot of things with like, you know, a lot of Fortune 500 and 100 companies through marketing, uh, mm -hmm. launching different things for them, like, C, like you know, like launching like their services or products through like interactive CDs and things. He also had restaurants. So we had a lot of different restaurants in Montreal. You would mm -hmm. buy restaurants, flip them. Uh, and then my mom was in the clothing business for her whole life. So it was like all women's apparel. They had, my family had, you know, 50 plus stores across Canada. So she was heavily involved in women's fashion. Okay. And so um, then what happened in your teens and into, you know, getting into your 20s? Did you go to college? Uh, no, no. So I dropped out. I dropped out during high school. Um, I, you know, at one point I was just making... Uh, by the time I was in grade nine, I was making about 40, 35, 40,000 US a month, which back then was double in Canadian. So wow. I used to just, you know, want to go have fun and, and, you know, just try to, from there, I got to understand the business side of things. So I wanted to do different things in business. Like, you know, the internet was like 
growing, growing suddenly, right? There was different types of sites, different types of platforms people were coming out with. And I started to get into like wanting to learn web designing, learn programming, uh, learn, you know, um, internet marketing, which it was like, all it was back then was email marketing. That's all it was like knowing how to send emails and knowing how to hit inbox. Cause there was no, there wasn't even a spam filter back then, you know? Wow. So I, I found creative ways on how to capture email lists and, uh, you know, learned learned a lot of a uh, lot of crazy tricks, and uh, and and you know, became one of the biggest um, email marketers um, during that 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 little dot com era. So a lot, a lot of a lot of stuff, getting into different industries and stuff too. So you know, I, basically the business kind of took over from my uh, took over my overall the education aspect. I said, look, I said you know, at one point this is what I want to do. I want to learn how to able to make more money and grow and at some point like if i need the book smarts i have my parents with me and i can always learn the book smarts from here and get it and uh you know just keep doing what i'm doing so you have a company called limitless now that is based on health and uh, wellness right and and talk to us about how um your company was built it came on the heels of your own personal struggle talk to people about that so the reason I, I the name the reason for the name limitless is because I truly believe that uh, you know everybody has ev anybody can achieve anything that they they want in life provided that they have the discipline and they have the focus and willpower and the belief in them believe in themselves the self confidence to pursue what they want right no matter what it may be so your life is you know you are you are the person that's going to ultimately be either your um, your successor or your, or like you, you'll, you have your destiny in your hands, right? Like either you can do a hundred things or you can do nothing. It just depends on what you choose to do in your day and how, how much you'll progress. So, um, health and wellness is something that, you know, everybody in the world kind of wants to be, wants to look good and feel great. That's the one thing anyone has in common. Um, I wanted to get into this industry because it changed my life. You know, my, early part of my my life i was more focused on making money and not prioritizing my health in any way because i didn't see what repercussions there could be down the road so i would you know because there was no social media back then so nobody was looking at each other nobody was saying hey i want to you know what's this guy doing or what's that person so th there was none of that going on right we were not we were not in that type of era as we are today Today, everyone looks at, hey, how does this person look? Or what does this person have? So I want this, or I want to be like that person. And um, eventually, with social media coming out and the awareness things kicking in and, you know, me wanting to, um, you know, now, like, focus on my health and realize that eventually your health is what you're going to have for the rest of your life. And that's how you can really, you know, grow into whatever you and achieve what you want. Because if you're not healthy, then there's only so far you're going to go. And um, I decided to focus on exercising. Um, but, and then, I, you know, at, at that time, there was mobile phones. I mean, smartphones. I wouldn't say mobile phones, but smartphones where you can operate your business from wherever you are. Um, today, you don't need to be sitting anywhere. You can, you know, and somebody who does e-commerce, they can operate from anywhere with all the apps that are there, right? Back when I started, you had to be stationary. So you have to sit in front of the computer. And if you're not in front of your computer, you're basically not able to control your business or operate. And as I started to lose weight, I wanted to shift industries and I wanted to get into the dietary supplement space. I wanted to get into, um, you know, things related to, you know, bettering yourself and being able to provide people with solutions where they can also change their lives based on things that I've done. Right. So it's, it's a combination of things. It's not just about taking a supplement, but it all it starts with your mindset first and putting yourself in that place and believing you can do it and then adapting to it. The supplements are a very small piece to the whole equation. Right. But yeah. So people would not even guess this by looking at you or listening to how you're talking if they're not watching YouTube, but you're very handsome, very svelte. And um, at one time you weighed, if I'm, can I say over uh, uh, 450 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and how much have you lost since then? I have lost over 200 and I was over 450. So I know that for a fact because the doctor's weighing skill wouldn't go over 450. Oh, wow. so that's hundred <laughs> percent. Um, so, but I've, I, right now today I weigh 225 pounds. 
but my body fat level is about like 12, 11%, roughly 11, 12%. And I heard you talk about the difference between just weight and losing weight. Talk about that. Um, so, I mean, in terms of like the, the weight aspect, I mean, you can, so focusing like the number on the scale. So at one point I was like, just focused on losing weight and I was looking at the number on the scale Mm -hmm. and that's a very wrong thing to do because you know, your muscle weighs more, right? So the lowest I ever got to was 182 pounds, but I had like no muscle. I was super skinny. But at that point, it's like you're, you know, you're pretty much you're, you're skinny, but you're not toned in any way, right? So you have to understand how you look and feel more than the number on the scale. The scale number doesn't really mean anything. There's guys that are 250 pounds, but they're super lean. They're like 9%, 10% body fat, you know? So you can't look at the number on the scale because you could be holding water weight. You could, there's a lot of other factors that go into it, you know? So you did this all with diet and exercise. You didn't use supplements at the time. Yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't use any supplements in the beginning at all. Zero. I just, I did it with, uh, I did it by, by going on a calorie deficient diet. So I was having below 1000 calories a day for three months straight. The first three months I lost 88 pounds, which most of it was water weight. And then from there I went into, you know, I went into like wanting to lose more, lose more, lose more. And then I hit a plateau. Then I had to break the plateau. It's just the constant back and forth thing. Cause you, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over. You know, it stops working after a while. So the people that are struggling with weight right now and want to know how to start with a diet before we get into your yeah. supplements, what, what sure. would you say is the diet that worked for you? Cause I think people so are really where, having a hard time figuring that out. So this is where it gets really interesting. So, you know, without getting into all the details, like right now, the, the, the thing is there's a certain key to this that people don't realize that they need to do first. Right. So you can, like, even though I lost a lot of weight or whatever I've done, it's impossible for me to s- just tell somebody blindly, Hey, you should do this. I could say, Hey, you should go on a, on a, on a diet where you start at eating less than 2000 calories a day, but they put based on your, your weight and your body type and stuff, then bring it down slowly. But what to eat, what not to eat, what to do, what not to do is very hard unless you have someone's blood results and you're able to read those. Right. Oh. It's very important because there could be food intolerances. You could have, you know, um, high cholesterol. You could have your thyroid could be low. There's so many other things that that are needed. And, and then based off your blood results is how you need to pair the supplements, right? So you if, if you if there's something wrong, let's say with your thyroid and you're eating super clean, it doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to lose weight. So there's a lot of other factors. And I feel like people are not educated in that and that's where i'm in the process of taking the company today i'm taking it in that direction where um you know we really want to help people change lives and it's not just another hey yes we have supplement brands we do dietary supplements but the big picture in this in this whole company and the vision is you know transitioning into medical health transitioning into pharmaceuticals into like really like it's like a car right you take a car to the workshop if you if they don't plug in the computer at the bottom and read the codes, they're not going to know what's wrong. You know, they're right. just winging it. So it's the same way. Your body, every year things change. You may not be allergic to certain things before. Um, and then now, five years later, you are, right? So you have to constantly monitor that. And that's how you can really, you know, get like the, the best results, you know, and you can really know what to do and what not to do. Um, this is, I just am curious for me, are you getting into any anti-aging products? Cause as we yeah. age, um, you know, it's hard to not want to go get plastic surgery to make yourself look younger. So what would I yeah. do? I mean, I'm almost 50. So what would I do to look better? <laughs> so we're getting into, we're doing a lot of, um, we're going to be getting into a lot of anti-aging stuff, like aside from the basic skincare stuff that's there right now, like the typical, like, you know, just the formulated skincare stuff. We're going to be getting into a lot of, um, a lot of anti-aging stuff, stem cells, many, many, many different things, right? There's different types of compounds and stuff like different, there's different things I have that, that I'm just waiting, like, cause our company's public right now, but we're in the process of uplisting to, you know, an, a, the, the bigger exchange. So once our uplisting is done. That's when we're going to introduce those new things that are coming in because it's going to shift the business model quite a bit, you know, but yes, there's going to be a lot of things that are, that are not your typical um, direct to consumer like product, a lot of innovative, innovative things. Okay. So you believe it's more than just popping a pill though. It's like a lifestyle. It's a mentality. It's um, changing a lot of things about you and getting the blood test. There's a science behind it. 
Correct. Yes. So talk, talk to me about some of the products that you have and have done well with that, you know, work because you've tried them. So every product that we have that we sell works. That's one thing for sure. Because when I first started losing weight, I vowed, I, I, vowed, I promised myself that I would not get into supplements business because back then the products that I would try something or the other was not working the way. And I realized how I did it and I didn't take the supplements, but I just lost weight. So the wall I did was go from being super obese to getting skinny, right? And that doesn't tighten your skin. It doesn't do your skin. Correct. So, and I wasn't lifting weights. So I wasn't doing any weights for years and years. All I was doing was cardio, basically treadmill, nothing else. Mm -hmm. So when I actually wanted to tone my body, and lift weights and stuff, that's when I realized the importance of supplements. And then I had certain things that were formulated for me specifically that worked and that helped tighten my skin, that helped give me the definition. Um, you know, all of these, I started to understand why the pro, the, you know, taking protein shakes is important as much as just, you know, opposed to just eating a chicken breast because of the, the the other aminos and stuff that are in the actual protein powder itself. So I started to learn and understand more about what does the BCA do? Why are free, why is fish oil important? Why is omega-3 important? Why is this? Why is, you know, all these different things. And that's when my body slowly over the years started to change and get to where I am today. So in that respect, you know, the best thing is that I, once I realized that I said, okay, this is, this is actually something that does work and I, but I want to come out with stuff that is going to work and is uniquely formulated and stuff that has flavor and is powder based. It has to taste good because people go by the flavor. And what's your day in the life of like what you're taking right now? So I take, so I have, uh, I take probiotics. I take fish oil. I take omega three. I take, um, uh, I have a protein powder. I love strawberry flavor. So I drink that two times a day. Uh, I have, uh, I take greens shake, a greens drink every single day. Um, and I don't take pre-workouts. I just drink a coffee. So I don't do any pre-workout. Uh, the one thing that I swear by that I drink every morning and every night is, um, chick uh, is bone broth, chicken bone broth. I've That's heard that really before. Why, why do people swear by that? It's good for your skin. It's good for tightening your skin. It's good for anti-aging. It's good for rejuvenation and all kinds of different. It has tons of health benefits. It's good for digestion, all of that. Wow. Okay. So I guess yeah. I got to start. I take zinc drinking. every morning. I take digestive enzymes. Um, you know, I take, yeah, digestive enzymes. So those are like all the, the standard, like the wellness, the health wellness stuff, you know? Okay. What's your favorite product that you guys have right now? that you want to tell us about? Um, so one of the really good products we have that's a fat metabolizer and that I, I love is a keto, the apple cider vinegar mixed with keto gummies. So it's a BHB keto, which, keto, so what keto does is that everybody's heard of a keto diet, but we have, so we were the first to launch and create keto gummies, actual BHB keto gummies. There's other guys that tried to replicate it after, but nobody has done the keto BHB gummies like the way we have. And what we, we do is the keto, the, 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 whether it's capsules or gummies, they put your body in a state of ketosis a lot mm -hmm. quicker than you would if you were just to eat like a keto-based diet, which is just like, you know, fats and fats and protein, right? So you take that and you get, your body goes into ketosis within 20 minutes. And then it helps you also, there's certain other ingredients like green tea extract and stuff that help you in natural weight loss. Okay, natural, like the com a completely natural weight loss, right? It's just a, basically a fat metabolizer. So mm -hmm. those are really good and it has apple cider vinegar in it. So apple cider vinegar, as you know, is very good to drink in the morning. You could take one little teaspoon of it and it's good for your, your metabolism, your you know digestion, burning fat, all of that, right? So that's a, that's one of the very good product. And we also have like, we have tons of things. We have the, these, these anti-stress gummies. Uh, we have, um, we have sleep gummies. So all of these things work. And now we're launching a line that's strictly for women. Um, we actually launched it two years ago, we're just rebranding it and like doing a, a, a proper brand launch, which is Diva Trim. And we're going to have all these different products, but female oriented, like for women only. That's what I was going to ask you, actually, because you see a lot of vitamins or whatever that's separated by male and female. Is that a real thing? Uh, yes, because because of the dosage. 
of, oh, of right. yeah, because of the dosage, right? So like, you're not going to drink a protein like 40 grams in a, in, in a serving. You're going to want to drink more like 15 grams, 18 grams. You know, right. you're going to want to drink 40 grams twice a day, 80 grams of protein, right? Okay. Okay, so, so it's, the, it's the dosage. It's And then of course, like for women, you know, you want to focus on like collagen. Like women love anything with collagen, right? So like mm -hmm. the hair, nail, skin, and the beauty gummies, and this and that. So this, it's it's a different type of um, it's it, it's different different similar type of products, but like slightly different ingredients, slightly different formulations. And is it true that people can really take a pill or t drink something that's helping to tighten their skin or help with collagen? Um, yes, they could. It just it takes time for sure. Okay. It so it's consistency. Yes, it's not like a magic pill. Yeah, it's consistency. I mean, collagen is, you know, you naturally produce collagen, right? But I mean, you have to, you just have to, you know, you take, if you take supplements with collagen as well, that's what helps produce, you know, new skin cell and, and you know, just looking overall, looking better and getting healthier and younger. So if there are women listening right now and they go on your website and there's one product that you think is like the magic product for women, what would that be so they can find it? I don't think there's one magic product. I think the magic product, I think the magic product is you have to take care of yourself. No supplement is going to take care of you for you. Right. I don't, there's, there's no, there's nothing you can buy that's going to keep you healthy um, indefinitely. But if like if you wake up in the morning and you, you know, you do your cardio, you do your workout that in itself, like going in a sauna, right. People don't understand just sitting in a sauna, for 20 minutes a day, how much that helps your skin because you get rid of bad toxins, you get rid of all these things, right? Mm -hmm. So those are things that you need to do first. You you have to program your brain to want to live a healthy life. You have to program yourself to eat clean, right? I'm not saying don't eat pastas and this and that. Yes, of course, in moderation. But if you're sitting and eating steak every single day and potatoes and all kinds of fried food, then you're you're not going to have healthy skin as compared to someone that's you know eating a, a cleaner diet, right? right? So that's go ahead. Go ahead. And do you believe in drinking a lot of water? I hate water. <laughs> four liters a day. Really? That's another thing. Yeah, four liters a day. That's what keeps your skin clear. Wow. Okay. So I'm adjusting yeah, my, my, whole, my whole thing yeah. going forward. Okay. Um, so there are so many companies uh in competition in the in the health and beauty and wellness category. What sets you apart? Why are you different? Um, I think, I think when it comes to nutrition, specifically nutrition, right? Skincare is different. Skincare, the new products that we're going to come out with and stuff, you know, there's, they're, um, they're backed by experts. They're backed by people who, you know, I mean, it's innovative stuff. You know, it's not just your typical, Hey, let's get a good formulator and make something and make a nice packaging, right? Like what goes on with skincare products. My experience in skincare is more on the marketing side than it is on the actual formulation side. But of course, I have people that work with us that know what they're doing and, and, and whatnot. So there's, you know, that's there's a limitation of experience I have there. But when it comes to nutrition, which is the main focus, the health, wellness, like just whatever goes in your body, that's my expertise from top to bottom, right? So the difference is I have done it in real life. There is nobody else in this industry that owns a brand that is out there that has a story like mine, real life that has actually done it with a body transformation to getting in the industry and to having the type of backing and the representation like the way I have it, right? So it's a real life story and real experience, right? There's a lot of people that are trainers, they'll tell you X, Y, Z, but they weren't, they never lived that life. They, so right. they don't know what it's like. They went from this point to this point. They didn't go from this point to that point. So what makes it different is I actually did it. And based off doing it, I got in the industry and got to the top level in the business um, at a global level. And based off that, have met some of the best formulators, some of the best uh, you know, top advisors, A to Z in the industry, and have come out with the products based off my own life experiences, and stuff that I see people struggle with, and what really does work. And I'm like my own guinea pig.
That's great. So I want to get into your whole entrepreneurial thing now for a second, because I think that's really inspirational for people. um, And there's a lot to learn there. My first question, though, is did you ever hit a rock bottom? Because I have found in my own life that it's really important to fail to be able to succeed. And so many people will come on a show and talk about how great they are and how great their products are, but they don't talk about the failure. I think it's really important to have a failure. What do you think? Yeah, you have to fail because if you don't fail, you don't learn. And then you don't learn from them. You don't learn from the mistakes and then you can't ever grow. Every successful person out there, unless they inherited the money, have failed. And if they've inherited the money and if they fail and they lose it, they won't know how to ever make it back again. So those right. people don't count to me. If you if you have money that your parents gave you, you don't count. You're not an entrepreneur. You're just born into it, you know, um, because they, they can't hold a conversation for more than 10 seconds. I mean, you'll lose them after that and they won't be able to answer anything. Right. Because uh, they don't yeah, get have, it. They haven't been through it. They don't get it. They don't understand the formula. And once you know the formula, it's the same formula for everything, but you got to learn the formula, right? And people yeah. respect the ones who, who've done it in real. So yeah, I have, I've done it two times where I've made millions and gone down to zero and made millions and gone down to zero. So it's happened to me twice already. So, and but I heard. Was that from betting on the wrong horse, backing the wrong product? Like what um, happened there? Being impatient, just, you know, wanting to, instead of focusing on doing one thing, just, you know, and, and going slow and steady, just wanting to build Rome overnight. And then, you know, like putting out money everywhere as quickly as possible, more of an ego thing than anything else, you know, worrying about what other people would think if it doesn't look like how it should look, right? If it does, if it looks like more, you know, if it doesn't, putting more money than I needed to, right? If I, if I could do something with, let's say a hundred grand, I'd put 350 to make it embellish it even more, but it's not needed, right? right? That was not needed. So it was a very bad business decision. So I would say thinking with emotion, making emotional decisions that are irrational and that don't make sense business-wise. Right. Okay. So you took your company public. What was that like? Is that a good thing? It was a challenge. I, I only wanted to do it because it was challenging, to be honest with you. Um I mean, when it comes to private business, you know, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars of turnover. Like I mastered that to me, that's easy to build a company to do uh, a few hundred million dollars a year and, and, you know, take it to that billion plus mark is it's not complicated. It's really not because it's, it's your, when you're selling products or services and you're, and really the, you're really the, the key in this is not even what you're selling. The key is knowing how to do the marketing. If you know how to do marketing and if you know how to scale your campaigns, you can bring in the revenue, right? So doing those numbers, um, you know, I was like, okay, I want to go public because I, I figured I'm like, if I'm going to do this privately, I'm going to have to run it for another five years, 10 years, and then look at the multiple, then eventually sell, blah, blah, blah. I said, or I can build a vehicle and use the currency of that vehicle to acquire other companies in different right. industries and increase my multiple and do all these crazy things because ultimately even the stock market comes down to marketing. So I figured out how it works. And then I said, okay, well, the challenging part in it is everything is disclosed, right? You have to be black and white. So mm-hmm. that's the part where you have to have, you know, and, and, and there's not one entrepreneur on the planet that has done hundred million plus business turnover a year that in their first shot, they have their books together. Now one, right. every entrepreneur has one, the same problem. They don't have a good accounting team. They have their books are upside down because they're too busy focused on making money that they're not worried about their books. But the most important thing that I learned in this journey and why I wanted to go public was because that was my weakness all this time was I know how to make the money. I know how to bring it in, but I, my strength was not the books part and to grow and to, you know, to be able to have a valuation, to sell your company, to do other big things with credit, et cetera. You need to have all your books together. In the order, right way. Yeah. So did you have so, to get a great staff behind you to take care of that? Yeah, so I have two CFOs. I built a whole accounting team. So what this allowed me to do, this was more of a learn. It was me wanting to learn the other side of it that, okay, I want to get to the billionaire level, right? I want to get to that level where it's like, you know, like I can sell the company. I can, there's an asset it's there. It's an, and what they look at is your, your, all your pal, your balance sheets, your P and L's, your this and that. So I'm like, I wanted to learn that part. And that's 
the reason that, you know, going public, you have to have that stuff together. Because if you don't, you can't go public because everything has to be disclosed, you know? Right. So um, so it was, it was challenging. It was challenging. It was a nice challenge, you know? So we went on the OTCQB, which is a fully reporting. So you can't, it's not like the pink sheets where you can just file anything and you don't, you're not, nothing's mandatory. And now the uplisting aspect is is fun. It's it's a fun ride where, like I said, it's more for me. It's it's first is about the experience, about learning, because I I like to learn new things and I like to tackle these. You know, in business, I love these kind of challenges because I'm like, how can I, how can I, you know, it helps me sharpen my brain even more. Right. So you chose not to use limitless as a ticker. You you used vibe, right? V Y B E, and it stands for something, right? Visualize yourself better every day. Amazing. Correct. Okay. So I love that. And by the way, did your, did you get your skills in marketing from your dad? You said he was in marketing. Um, I learned a little bit. Of, I, I learned some things from my dad, but I learned, I mean, I would say a lot of it. I mean, I just, I picked it up over time because my, my experience is like, I, I'm more of a, cause I, I know creative. So I'll think creatively and I'll look at an industry and like, okay, how do you position this person with this? And it's more like, you know, if you look at what we sell, it, it's all the same type of products. I mean, in the nutrition business, you only have 40 types of products, but you have over 400 companies that make them. So what's different aside from the minor formulation? It's the packaging. How do you, you got to make some, you walk in a store, what attracts you to the wall on here instead of there? It's the, it's the, the look, how they place the products, what they place where, the shelving, right? right. So it's all packaging that you're, you got to first sell the customer on, you got to first sell them on the packaging and the look of the website or the look of the sales funnel, and then you, could, you they try the product. They're buying. They're basically believing your your hype before getting your product. You know. And how important do you think the the price is? Because I've always found it interesting that you see like you know Chanel and all these products right on Madison Avenue that are so expensive, but they're going to sell yeah. like one bag. Whereas you go into Target, you have the opportunity to sell five hundred thousand things right for a smaller amount. Talk about that. Right. So it depends, right? It depends on who you're catering to. Like mm-hmm. in our case, let's say with like keto products and stuff, we're catering to masses. So we have to be priced correctly, right? Um, but even when you cater to masses and you build your brand and stuff, you can have select SKUs that are priced very much higher, you know? But when you're new, you're entering the game, you're doing whatever, you have to be priced affordable, right? These luxury brands, uh, there's no such thing as a luxury brand supplement. That's what I tried to do in Canada. I built these stores and I wanted them to be the luxury brand stores of nutrition, right? So I wanted to make them look like an LV store and very nice, everything, modern day fixtures and, and, and flooring and all that. But then I realized at the end, I just wasted money doing it because the people walking in are not, that's not the client. They don't care. All they care about is price. So you have to be competitive in price. And that's, and that's just the name of the game, but you have one of two options. You either go super high or you go, or you beat the pricing. Like Amazon, they became who they are because of price competition, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, but yes, price is, is very important, but I feel like today the customers are so well educated that everything is important. The price, the packaging, the, the quality of the product, the taste, it's all equally important because you're dealing with smarter customers. That's right, because everything's online. They can just Google anything yeah, and find online. out the competition yeah. immediately right. within seconds. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, for what what would your suggestions be to other entrepreneurs who want to grow their brand? Like, what's your biggest number one thing to tell them? I think the first thing you have to do is, you know, whatever your brand may be or what you're looking to do, you have to be able to. Um, for, be sure that that's what you want to do, like understand why you want what you want, and then like really be able to commit to it because it's not easy today. It's really not. I mean, it's all it's primarily social media driven more than search, even more than search engines. Um, and you know, it, it, it's it's having like access to influencers and other people around you, um, always helps today because it's it's literally all it's almost like a word of mouth thing that's traveling. But you have to be like on point because the service, the customer service and everything you provide, that's really what's going to make you or break you. Right. Um, so now talk about your influence in social media. How did you get involved in Instagram? Because you have 10 million followers or 10 and a half million followers. That's incredible. <laughs> so I hated Instagram. So I had an Instagram for a long time and it was always a private account. I had like three, 400 followers. I shut it down like two times, reopened another one. And I could just never, I just never understood the logic of it, right? I mean, at mm-hmm. one point, 
I, I had a private account. I was uh, I was with a you know I was at a dinner, and then this girl asked me, well, "How many Instagram followers do you have?" I said, "How many fo- how much money do you have in the bank?" <laughs> you know, like it doesn't it doesn't matter what followers you have. You can't go and tell somebody I have X number of followers. You know, give me this for free, right? Like at a grocery store or whatever, right? So, long story short, I realized that in order to grow, like, is I was trying to build my vision through others. I was trying to bring like artists or uh, other celebrities or other athletes in the front line of it. And then me being in the back, just kind of running the operations because I didn't want to be the front guy. Then people that were close to me said, hey, look, you're not going to accomplish what you're trying to do unless you yourself are the front guy. So you have to go in the front. You have to be the the, the, the guy, you know, or else it's just never going to move because nobody else has the vision that you have, plus you have the relatable story, they don't. Doesn't matter what they really do for a living, they don't have that story that they can they can talk about it. So I, I, I gave it a shot, I turned my Instagram on and, and you know, I just had an interesting life that people started to follow me. I used to go, I would go to the basketball games and here and have a lot of cars and so on and so forth. So people slowly, you know, started to follow me because other celebrities and athletes and stuff would be posting me. And for about two years, I used to do these motivation videos on my stories. I would just, you know, hold the camera and just keep talking. And I never thought I'd be talking to myself in a camera on the Mm -hmm. phone, but I kept doing it for so long that it built an organic following. And then, of course, I participated in different campaigns, like the giveaway things and this and that, different campaigns that people do, like to, you know, increase their awareness on Instagram, build more followers and stuff like that. And, And over time, it grew to where it is today. So it's basically a tool for you to market your company, but you're using yourself as kind of the forefront of it. Yeah, because I'm pretty much the the I'm pretty much the story, the front yeah. story for the whole brand and the company. What do you think of Instagram followers now? Like, you know, people that are like dancing in their bedroom and all of a sudden next thing you know, they're like buying five million dollar houses. I don't get it. Can you explain that to me? It's crazy because it's it's taken over. I think that I think that social relevancy is very, very important. The only thing that's changed in the last few years is conversions through in, through these platforms and the followers. I think because the the meta became so smart, they realized that look, these people are getting paid directly. We need to open our ads there and limit their reach so that we can have people and companies, brands, run their ads through their accounts. So now if you want to really get, let's say if I want to do something with you, I would need you to activate your account and do a link with us for like a brand deal. And then we would put, let's say, okay, we want to put a $5,000 budget. We'd put that budget to your audience so that now you can hit your whole audience with that budget or else we're only going to get five to 7% of your audience if we pay you directly. So it's, you got to do both. You got to pay the influencer a little bit and you have to pay meta or else it's there. You're never going to hit the reach, you know? So it's almost like billboards. Right. Exactly. And okay. So you have, I'm not going to say, uh, you know, a a life to show off, but you kind of do have a life that you show off. You have all these cars. Let's talk about your cars for one second. How many cars do you have? I don't know. I lost count. Well, um, like 10, 20, 30, five. I'd say, I'd say upwards of 50 plus. Oh shit. Okay. Wow. All right. So do you have a favorite car that you drive? What's your everyday car? Like you're not driving a Toyota around. My everyday car is a Range Rover. Okay. All right. Fine. Literally. Um, is it like a couple of years old or do you trade them in every year? The new one, the okay. new one, the SV, the SV LWB, the big new long one. And do you the, have a favorite the... color? Uh, it was white. Okay. Me too. I have a Range Rover that's white. Okay. So we get along there. Okay. But, and that out of your favorite cars that are like sitting in your driveway that you never drive, do you have a favorite Hmm. one? Yeah. I like the, the, my favorite one that I have is a Shelby GT 500. It's the one from the movie gone in 60 seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. And do you drive that around? I drove it once or twice. That's (laughs) it. It's parked. Most of my cars are parked. How explain that as are you just a collector? You like to look at them or it's like a thing. Yeah, it's like art. It's it's like art for me. So basically for me, it's more like I drive them here and there, you know, each car I'll take it out like once in a blue moon, you know, but Mm -hmm. the thing is for me, it was more like more based off milestones, like hitting certain milestones or, you know, telling myself, Hey, I'm going to do this, this, this. And if this, once I hit this milestone, I'll buy this. And that's how it happened. So you invest your money in something tangible as a, as opposed to throwing it away on something. Are you like Correct. a big party animal? No. Okay. So you don't go to nightclubs and 
throw around. I, don't I, have I have a partnership in a nightclub, but I don't, uh, I used to go to clubs a lot. I used to go to clubs a lot before, but now I'm, I'm so busy with work and stuff. And plus like I've, I've outgrown it. Like I'll go out, I'll, you know, I'll go, I, I like to go to restaurants and things like that, but I, I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not go clubbing every day. I mean, I don't drink. So. Oh, Oh, why don't you drink? I stopped. I used to drink a lot. I stopped. Change of life completely. I just, it, it, because it's it's against what I'm trying to do. Every day I would drink. I would drink so much champagne. And this is that the next morning I'd wake up and I'm bloated. And then so I'm right. like sitting here working every day trying to get my abs. And then every night I'm losing my abs and I'm trying to get them and I'm losing them. So I, I just, over time, I'm like I'm messing my head up and I can't focus on work. So I over, slowly, slowly, I just stopped completely. And now I don't drink at all. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, so, and I saw that you have friendships with a lot of celebrities. Floyd Mayweather looks like he's a close friend of yours. How did, how did you yeah. meet him? Uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. Um, so, you know, I met him, uh, I met him through one of the, one of my mutual friends, you know, we became very close since then. He's very, we're very, very close. He's a business partner of mine. You know, he's, he's helped me a lot. You know, he, he backs up anything I do. Whatever I do, he stamps it. He's he's been there, you know, through through a lot. He's seen a lot of this get built from scratch before mm-hmm. any of it ever existed. So, you know, of course, he's a globally recognized name. Everybody knows who he is. So, you know, he's played a major role in getting me out there as well. Yeah. You know, it's good to have people, friends like that. I guess. Yeah. I mean, they see like it's been years and years. Like Floyd is with me, you know, all the time. So they're like, okay, these two are actually like super tight. Um, I used to run a nightclub in Las Vegas for many years. I opened up Tau in Las Vegas. And when I lived there, um, I was the director of VIP operations. So I dealt with all the celebrities that came in. And Floyd came in all the time with his crew. And he was one of my favorite clients that I ever had. He would come up. I would know that he was coming up the stairs because all the security would start, you know, yelling in my ear, he's coming, he's coming. And um, he would get to the front. He'd throw down a ton of money for all the hosts and he would only want me to walk him upstairs. I would go with him and he didn't drink. I don't know if he doesn't drink now all the time. So he would never drink. He would have water and then he'd get drinks for all the people around him. And he would just sway to the music and just hang out with me. He wanted me to stand next to him, make sure he was good and protected and no one was really talking to him because he didn't really want to be bothered, but he wanted to make sure everyone around him was having the best time. And I loved that about him. I thought he was just the greatest guy ever. And he was popular at the time, but this was like 2005 to 2009. He, I mean, he wasn't as popular as he is now, you know what I mean? And I just, I thought he was the greatest and I always, you know, I'm so happy to see how well he's always doing. So. Oh yeah. He's, he's the best when it comes to that. I mean, people don't know, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. I think he's like a great person. He's not like what people see on TV all Oh, no, it's not like the image. No, the Instagram image is one thing. No, the real He's like a lover. Is... He's not even a fighter. That's what no. I always thought was great. Always tells me, even when I get mad at people or something, he's like, listen, listen, he's like communication. So you got to handle everything like properly. He's not, right. yeah. No he's fists. Not yeah. It's right. a lot for him to get angry. He doesn't get angry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I also saw you in a picture with, um, tell me the Russian guy's name, the little Russian guy who was standing on a Hasbula. Yes. What is the deal with this guy? Why is everyone so into him? Does he speak he's English, hilarious. by the way? He doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak English. Um, you know, he's very, very popular. I mean, he's the funniest. He's the funniest guy. It's, it's just hilarious. But how did he's he little- become such a star? I don't even get it. I, I mean, you know, there were the two of them, the two little guys that were like fighting with each other. It went viral, you know, <laughs> it's from there. It's just Instagram. It was it just became funny. He's a funny little guy. Right. Okay. So how was it, it was meeting him? Nice. It was cool. Yeah, we had we had fun. We went we went to he, he saw some of my cars. He got excited. He went in and just kept revving the engine. And uh, he, you know, we took him out to take photos. Uh, he, was, he was standing on standing on the hood. Like it was just really funny. Uh, he has a translator. Yeah, he has somebody, but he's never really talking. He's more like whining. It's really oh funny. Oh God. Okay. Well, maybe I should ask him to come on my podcast so I can try and communicate with him. That's hysterical. All right. So, um, I know you said you were into wrestling as a child. So now that you're famous and popular and all this stuff, uh, have you been able to meet any of your, you know, heroes from when you were little? Uh, I have, I've met, I've met some, I met some of them. I recently actually just met one person that was, you know, my idol growing up that, you know, he's like the person I used to watch every single day. And like one, you know, that got me hooked on, it was Bret Hart. You know, he's, he's a Canadian, he's a wrestling legend. 
um and like the, his family heart family is just, they're huge you know they're, it's like a, a household name you know in in the sport they're one of the, the innovators right in the whole thing the whole game so mm -hmm. i got to meet brett that was like a very very good moment you know um but it's really funny i'll tell you a funny story so i have access to and everything right i can get access to whatever event it is related to hollywood whatever carpet whatever backstage music show boxing this that the one thing that i love the wrestling i still don't have the backstage access the connection inside there but i have access to everything else i can like you name it i can i can get the access this oh is the God. It's, 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 it's hilarious. You just have it's no hilarious. pull there in the one place you want. Oh, I have, I have some people that are inside, but you know, I have some people that are inside, but you know, it's a very, um, it's very different. You know, there's only, there's some of them are, are, are cool. Some of them are good. Some of them are just like, you don't even want to like, you, you, you watch them on TV and you're like, oh, this guy's great. And then you meet them. You're like, oh, this person's like obnoxious, you know? Great. Uh, and that's such it, a disappointment because you've built them up so much. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, they're, they're, it's a show, right? So, uh, but you know, again, it's like, it's the same thing in everything, you know, not everyone is as genuine as you, you think and, and seem, you know, right, uh, right. there's a lot of arrogance in that sport, a lot of arrogance. Okay, so just to go back for one second to your Instagram and social media, what would be advice for people that really want to grow that? Because that's such a big deal for a lot of people, their social media. Um, putting out putting out good content, you know, making right. people making people want to watch you because really it's like turning on the TV and it's it's like a show, right? Like so, you're 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 telling a person, hey, turn your TV on and watch my show instead of watching any other show, right? How do you do that? It's because they have to like your personality, they have to like how you look, they have to like what you're talking about, they have to like what you're putting out. So it's it's really about the person, you know? So if you're interesting and you can, you know, people are curious to wanna know more or see what's coming on next in your life, et cetera, then they're gonna wanna follow you. You know, they're gonna wanna see what you have going on. What are your thoughts on OnlyFans? I don't have any thoughts on OnlyFans. Have you ever gone? Corona. Have you? Yeah. Have you ever gone on it? Absolutely not. Um, really? No, I have no interest for anything like that. I just, I think. Listen, I think OnlyFans is a is a is a very good platform for give me. You know, it has brought people. It, it's like the 15 years ago, right? I think fashion comes back, like old type of sunglasses, old type of clothing. So back then, right? Like there was nothing free. Content people would pay, right? It was like. You know, they would sign up for memberships, get access to exclusive content, things like that. Then eventually everything became free with Facebook, Instagram. There was nobody paying for anything anymore. So OnlyFans brought back something where people, you know, can start um, making money off of whatever content it is that they want to they want to put out. And then everybody has their own channel and their own site and they can really do what they want. So what do I think OnlyFans did is give opportunity to a lot of people that, let's say, we're doing brand deals before with Instagram and now it's not working as well for them because people are going directly just advertising with meta and reach and, you know, putting, getting someone's reach without give, having to pay them directly, you know, it gave them the opportunity to leverage their fans and be able to make more money um, through exclusive content, whatever, whatever it is that they want to post and promote. What do so, you think about women taking off their clothes to make money or to get attention on Instagram to become an influencer? I think that everyone has a choice to live the life they want to live. I think it's their their decision. It's everyone has a reason for doing what they want to do. And it's, you know, you can't really control or tell someone, hey, do this or don't do that, you know? Uh, so everyone has, it's like choices. You make choices in life, right? Your choice is, hey, you want to go there and you want to, you want to do this. Okay, well, you have a reason behind it and, and no one that, that doesn't know you or whatever can should be able to tell you what to do or what not to do. Like I might, like, I don't like, I wouldn't be like, Hey, you know, telling someone, you know, mind getting into their business. They, every, everyone has something, everyone has something, you know, everyone has something positive and something that they do. That's, that's off something. Everyone has something. So people, you know, people have to, people have to make the choice that works best for, for them. Right. But it is interesting that social media, a lot of people use it for attention and to get self-esteem, let's say, or to feel yeah, worthy. Self it's, it's, it's to get more self-esteem. But if you tell, if you tell someone that they're going to tell you you're crazy. So you can't even say that. So right. it's for, but yeah, I mean, again, it's like for whatever, whatever reasons people do what they do, 
ultimately the one thing that we're all looking for in life is to get that feeling of satisfaction, to feel satisfied, right? Mm -hmm. So for a lot of them, that's what makes them satisfied by putting that there. And, you know, these, this crazy likes thing, I mean, it's, it's like a drug, right? But a lot of people, when they see that number go up, it's like, holy shit, you know, it's like, it, if God forbid that number from 82,000 is only showing 6,000, they're going to lose their mind. It, it, it's, it's like a, it's like a drug. So whatever... You know I think that social media is really bad for relationships. I've noticed that I have a hard time dating anybody who is obsessed with their Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is, because um, I just, first of all, I think it's weird that they're such a voyeur into other people's lives and they care so much and they cannot be present in their mo in the moment that they're in with the person they're in. But also I find it odd that people don't get that the stuff they're seeing is not 100% reality. It's like, obviously, people are putting the best pictures out, the best scenarios, the best quotes, whatever it is. And it's not who they are when they're sitting in front of Dateline at night eating ice cream or whatever. Right. And it makes a relationship right. super, super hard. So I've found that right. I don't like to even date people that are even on Instagram because it gives me it gives me agita just to be on it to begin with. I don't even like putting stuff out. Does it give you, yeah. um, do you get anxiety having to figure out what content to put out when you have 10 million followers looking at what you're saying? Could you ever yeah. mess up sometimes? Yeah. A lot of people overthink it. A lot of people, like, like for example, me, I don't, I, if I, I'll stay off, if I have to stay off, I'll post, if I'm going to post something, I don't really think about it. I'm just like in the moment. Oh, if I'm here, I like it. Let me just post this. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people, it's like, it's like so strategic and this has to look perfect and that has to be like this. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's, it's complicated. It's very, 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 um, you know, it's very, very difficult because uh, everyone's trying to be the perfect version and there's no such thing as the perfect version. Right. And how do you deal with, like, I've noticed on your posts, if I look down your Instagram, you're, you're posting things about your life and your cars and where you are, but you're not really posting anything about your social life or your, you know, who you are really as a person. Like I've never seen any pictures of who you're dating or anything like that. Do you try and keep certain things private? I, I keep my personal life completely out of Instagram. A to Z. I look at Instagram as just more of like a marketing tool and yeah posting things that are like, you know, either certain pictures of me in certain areas or events or things like that. But I don't, I don't put anything like personal life stuff on there. Even the car stuff I put here and there, but I'm not gonna, I don't overdo it. Like some people like really, really overdo it. Right. And does that make it hard sometimes for whoever you may be dating? Cause they don't feel validated cause you haven't, they haven't made it on your page. No, because I, I think anybody that's looking, I, first of all, I would never, date or be with someone that is like goes crazy just because like just wants to be on Instagram it would because for me I'm really not an Instagram person this is just an evil necessary for what I'm doing in the public markets and stuff if I wasn't if I wasn't trying to get my story to become a more of an inspiration thing where I can help inspire others to do you know to to to, to, you know, give them hope and believe in themselves and, and take steps forward. I wouldn't even have this stupid thing. Right. You know, it, it's right. I, I'm not, you know, so if someone is just like, oh, I want to post on Instagram, like I, I would lose my mind. So you can verify though. Like, I think that people that you're seeing on Instagram are not necessarily who they really are. Like you, you may be no, misunderstood not. as a person because people think oh, yeah. that you're super rich and happy and on, only hanging out with celebrities, but you have flaws and you have bad days and you have sure. things that are, like I get up when I when I'm in LA, I get up every single day at 3 a.m. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They don't. Nobody knows that. I get up at 3 a.m. I start working at 3 a.m. I go to bed by 8:30, 9 o'clock. Um, you know, I I don't drink. I don't go. I'm not. I'm invited to so many events. I say no. Even when I go to events, I stay 20 to 30 minutes. I leave. Even my own events, I I stay 20 to 30 minutes and leave. You know, I don't like. I I just. Um, I have so many other things going on and so much day-to-day -day stuff to handle that it's it's just for me it's like what people see is one thing yeah. but what really goes on is something different now am I trying to be someone I'm not on Instagram absolutely not because I actually have that stuff in real life you know mm -hmm. so nothing that go, gets posted on my page doesn't belong to me but a lot of times people will will do that to be someone they're not because they're trying to get you know more attention more this more that but it's you know it, it's all it's all for nothing at the end of the day right. it's all for right. nothing
Um, so what's your plan now? What What is your big thing that you have in the future that you're looking towards? So the next plan right now is just completing, getting our audit out of the way. That's what we're in the final process now. Then we have to do our filings to do the uplisting. So I see, you know, I see that happening next. There's a lot of travel. I have to go to different places. So I, you know, I'm bi-coastal. I live here. I also have a place in Miami. I travel a lot to New York, all three places constantly back and forth. And then, um, you know, summer, travel a little bit, go to Europe. I have to go to Cannes Film Festival, France, you know, just, I can enjoy, have fun at the same time. And, you know, my, my business, I can really run from anywhere. So wherever I am, I just adapt to the time zone and I have my laptop with me. Right. Um, and where can people find your products or find you if they want to, um, look you up more? My Instagram is, Instagram is the only social media, public social media profile page that I have, which is at Limitless. Um, products, we have many different sites, but vibe.com is the primary one. You know, at this, at this moment, we're in the process of rebuilding a lot of it. But this site, I would say by the month of July is going to have like, is going to be completely, completely different. Like in terms of like the brand direction, the company direction and what we're doing with like transitioning over into medical health and things like that, that's all going to be introduced by July. And of course there's links to, you know, we have the Diva Trim brand that's going to be up within the next 30 days. And then we have a lot of other like products. Like I have little tickers on my page with like the keto products and, um, and all the, you know, all the other uh, different things that we have from skincare to like Amarose is a skincare brand that we have. That one, you know, we're doing very well with that. So there's a lot of different brands. Okay, great. So if they go on your Instagram, they can locate all of that. Yeah, 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 everything can, is there. I have like all the links there. Okay, terrific. All right. Well, thank you so much. I loved speaking to you and uh, I wish you thank all the you. best. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.